Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and today I'm walking along this public footpath in this uh, sort of dappled sunlight area with some banks on either side of me and um, this is a very very strange and somewhat anomalous place you know because check this out right we have ferns growing here right which is great we have also um, <laughs> These rather interesting leaves that I always like to look of, man. They look a bit like, uh, they're a little bit like banana leaves. They give it a bit of a tropical feel to it. Right? And despite that, we also have, um, on this side, we have the sort of classic English ivy. Now, I can't see any holly trees, but I'm sure um, you can find some of them along here. So this is a very, very strange and anomalous part of the country um, in the sense that it looks wintry because of the deciduous stuff and because of the kind of a lot of the stuff that grows here. But at the same time, we have a lot of stuff that just grows wild, that gives it a subtropical appearance. So, holly and ivy and mistletoe, and ferns and very banana-y looking leaves too. It's kind of like being in the tropics and being in the cold north at the same time, very odd. And what's more, I'm recording this on the 19th of December um, 2020. Um, scheduled to go out in time for winter solstice. Happy solstice, yeah, we'll go out on the 21st. It's mild, apart from it being a bit of a cold wind. I'm not even wearing a coat today because it's a pleasant 12 degrees and it's uh, sunny as you can see. Now I'm expecting it to rain later and I did bring my, my posh raincoat with me, yeah, just in case. So, because I've got a long way to walk home from here, man. Um, but the walk is doing me good, right. Anyway, what I gonna say? before I start faffing around with my words. It's quite windy as you can hear. I thought that actually make nice background noise. Yes. So this is my solstice sermon two. And one of the things that um, I want, I like to share with everyone is one of my pet gripes, I suppose, every Christmas and New Year time. One thing I've never really liked is the way New Year is. I don't like the way um, you get to the December the 31st, and you get at midnight, you do the countdown, everyone freaks out and shouts Happy New Year, everyone's drunk, everyone's out their head, and the whole thing is just one hedonistic bender, right? And then, 12 hours later, the tumbleweed goes across. And there's no one around, everyone's got a hangover. And then for the rest of January, um, at least in this part of the world, the northern world where it's winter, everyone's just miserable bastards from then on, right the way through until spring. And then it makes me think to myself, ah, is New Year's Eve some kind of energy harvesting time? Is it some kind of bad habit we got ourselves into? And maybe do we need to have a different approach to it, a more introspective approach to it, so that we can actually focus more of our energy positively when we need it? And when do we need to feel positive more than ever? January into February. That's when we really, really do need to be focusing our energy more positively. Now, of course, my attempt to turn a negative into a positive is, as we find ourselves in this era of lurgy lockdown, um, find that we're gonna have to have ourselves a more introspective um, Christmas and New Year. Um, I would suggest, right, seeing as um, we can't all go out and party like we normally would um, on December the 31st, now you can have whatever Christmas you're gonna have. Honestly, I say fuck the government, fuck this cacistocratic bunch of cretins and their stupid scientific advisors. Um, and don't get into your head that you need to be deferential towards them to ask, are you allowed to do this? Are you allowed to do this? Just do what you do. They can't really enforce their rules on nearly 70 million people now, can they? Right? But Christmas aside, a week later, once we approach New Year, as it turns out, we are having to have ourselves a bit of more of an introspective one this time. So I'll tell you what I like to do, my New Year ritual, right? I like to not know what year it is, if I can. Now the last couple of times, um, it wasn't really that easy for me. And anyway, last couple of times as we went into the New Year, I wasn't even in England, man. It was 30 degrees and I was watching geckos climbing up my walls. I was in the Philippines, man. And um, well, you know, but if I find myself here, in this climate, which I will do this year, on December the 31st, I like to go for a walk in the dark, get away from the town. I like to not look at my watch, and I like to 
not know what time it is, therefore not know what year I'm in. I get away from it all. And all right, unfortunately, it's very hard to get away from the sound of that firework in the distant, or a distant cheer that you might hear. But I like to attempt to do that, not know what year it is. Take myself out of time, you know? And you think, well, that's a bit weird. No, why would you want to do something like that? Well, this is my, what I call, um, deferring gratification ritual. I keep noticing that people get into this real state of extreme euphoria, drunkenness, and the whole thing is just one hedonistic nightmare. Whereas you've got all these idiots shouting, that moon there, yeah, at you, right, everywhere you go on December the 31st. And as I said, only to find yourself spending the next day it's hangover land, it's tumbleweed land, there's no one around. And then the rest of the month, everyone's a miserable bastard. It's just January blues, right? Well, if you don't give that energy the, um, to the hedonistic party on December the 31st and you pull yourself out of time, right? And then think to yourself, get introspective and think to yourself, right, what am I going to do? I'm going to have myself a good January. That's what you can do. You can think, all right then, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make sure that my January is going to be happy and I'm going to filter all that energy uh, that I would otherwise um, shove into a big party tonight, as you say, as you approach December the 31st, and I'm going to redirect that energy and spread it out so that there's um, moderate happiness and positivity and hopefulness and resolution and all of these good things, right, as I go into January. And what happens then? Well, you see January all the way through, and then you get into February, and by the time you get to the 5th of February, I've noticed anyway, I've done a bit of a calculation. By the time you get to the 5th of February, six weeks have already gone by since winter solstice. By then, you get to the 5th of February, and then what happens? Suddenly, there's an hour and a half more daylight, at least at this latitude where I am, 50 degrees, an hour and a half more daylight already, you know? And um, you just go another six weeks on top, and it speeds up. You suddenly find yourself with an extra two and a half hours of daylight. So those three months go by and we find ourselves in spring equinox. Now, you've got to get on with your life and do what you're going to do. But the good thing about focusing all that energy on January, and for me personally, um, the pagan observance of winter solstice, and I like the word observance because it's all about observing nature. It's all about observing the sun, the length of the day, the height of the sun. The thing is rather than you know you're focusing on your hedonistic um, stuff that people like to do they're getting out of their heads stuff that people like to do over Christmas all right people like to get together with their friends and their loved ones and that's all right that's fair enough right but the good thing about the pagan thing being about the observance of nature is that it's an ongoing thing it's not just about Christmas because um, you do the halfway points between the equinoxes and the solstices the next one after um, is in bulk, the 1st of February. Now, as you go from solstice to in bulk, what do you notice? The days are getting longer. January is the first month where there's more light. And then two, three weeks later, where it would have been dark, you start noticing it's now dusk. And then another two or three weeks later, what, later where it's dusk, now the sun's in the sky, and now it's sunset at this time. And then before you know it, there's an extra hour in the evening, an extra half hour in the morning. Right. And then you get um, just a few weeks past that. And then you start noticing that these skeletal trees that you see around you, right, suddenly you start having little buds on them, little buds that are ready to burst. And then a little while later, some of them start producing blossoms. And then you, you get the first flowers, like the snowdrops and the crocuses. So the whole point of the whole pagan thing is it's about observances. And so you observe nature and you know what you're hoping for. And that energy that people would normally spend on the hedonistic Christmas New Year period, right? If that was focused towards the hope, and focused towards um, everything that's nice, you ride on nature, ride on the forces of nature, and as winter recedes into spring, every day getting brighter and more vibrant, it's all about being able to harvest that energy for yourself to make yourself feel happy. 
and I reckon that by sacrificing the euphoria of New Year's Eve into New Year's Day morning, save that, you know, save that for yourself, save that for all the observances um, as you go forward, as winter turns to spring, and avoid the January blues. Now this is what I do, you know, and um, I suppose one of the reasons why I decided to do that is because I kind of noticed year in, year out, I realised I always hated New Year's Eve. I always thought it was a load of bollocks. All right, I mean, Christmas is different, right? Le the lead up to um, winter solstice and into Christmas itself is different. But I always hated New Year's Eve. I always thought it was a bit stupid, you know? I always thought that people behaved in a really stupid way. And I always found that, you know, unless you've pre-booked an expensive venue, I mean, all right, we can't go anywhere this year because of the lockdown, but unless, since 2000, it's been like this. If, if you didn't, um, you know, book a pre-book, an expensive, exclusive party, you end up locked out on the street with all the oi polloi who are vomiting all over the place. Not pleasant at all, right? No. no. Now, of course, um, if you're lucky and you um, do manage to get your own party together in time for New Year's Eve, good. But just, uh, what I say, be responsible, don't lose it too much. And um, I, I think, yeah, don't leak, don't leak your energy, the harvestable energy. Don't be too euphoric. Don't feed the euphoria of that night because it exhausts it, man, you know? It all becomes about gluttony and, uh, you know, and hedonism. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of that, right? But I am also of the opinion, when I, when I, when I think about it, there are, you know, if, if I was to say there are three things that, I, that the Christmas and New Year period are about for me, for what I see, at least in the, um, what you would call the, either the Judeo-Christian or the pagan or the secular Western world. One, of course, although it's a bit of a minority sport, but a lot of us are kind of going back to this, the reclaiming of the old, the old Yuletide, the, the pagan festival, and, um, you know, the observing of nature, the shortening and the lengthening of days, paying attention to what the sun and the moon are doing um, as we go through the whole infinite cycle. There is, of course, the Christian one, which is all about singing carols and um, celebrating the birth of Jesus, whether, of course, he existed or not. There's that. Now, these two are traditional um, spiritual religious practices. But the thing is, these days, the Christmas that most people um, celebrate is neither of them, man. Most people are celebrating commercial Christmas, which I think I call cheesemus, right? Because it's cheesy. And it's all about stuff and it's all about tat and it's all about getting out your head and it's all about just filling, filling a void with stuff right? not good that's the bad Christmas that's the Christmas and the new year period that I kind of think of as the, um, the, you know, the energy harvesting for the vampires that wish to steal from you that's the Christmas and the new year that leads to a very miserable January and when it comes to the whole um, New Year's resolution thing. That's another thing, you know. People say, oh, oh yeah, my New Year's resolution is to do this. And they're only doing it and saying that because everyone else is doing it and saying it. And none of them fucking stick to it. They're just like robots on auto. No, if you've got resolutions, if you've got goals, if you've got plans, if you've got reevaluation to go into your life, do them off season. I did one in August. And now as we approach a new year, I'm approaching the midway point of it. But that's something that I'm going to be talking about in the next video as I turn around and walk home along here. So, here we go. I think I'm going to um, leave it at that. To be continued. So, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also, check out our new merchandise stores where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Links in the show notes below, as well as the links to all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, etc. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.